So we are looking at uh, the mission of an ambassador. The mission of an ambassador. Uh, if you send an ambassador uh, to a country, that ambassador has a purpose, has a mission, has something uh, is to achieve in that place. Mm -hmm. It's not to go there to fulfill his own desire. In fact, one of the things you must learn up as an ambassador going to a culture is that your opinion, your view doesn't count. What counts is the government that you represent. So if we are looking at the mission of an ambassador, it means we are looking at what God has set out for us to achieve as an ambassador. Not what you plan to achieve. Uh, I'm sure most of you are on social media. And uh, so it's, you will see a lot of write-ups like pursue your dream. Achieve your goal. Those statements, as innocent as they look, as inspiring as they seem, are very satanic. They are actually against the mind of God. You are not to pursue your dream. What, what dream do you want to pursue? Did you put yourself here that you are dreaming? The dream you can fulfill is God's dream. Joseph did not dream something for himself. It was God who revealed his mind to Joseph in a dream. And what Joseph pursued in the end is that dream. So when somebody is telling you, pursue your dream, think big. Think big for what? The Bible says that we should think like Christ. Christ said, for I am sending of me, for I am meek and lonely at heart. How did Christ think? Said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish it. It was not about him. If Christ did not make his own purpose about himself, who are we to make it about ourselves? And this misunderstanding of thinking that it's about ourselves is a reason why a lot of people run into error. Is a reason why people pray wrong prayers. So because you, you think that life is about you, you think God is somebody high there who should help you to achieve your own purpose. So you approach prayer from that point. Begging God, looking for formula. If they tell you that pray 12 a.m., you wake up 12 a.m. Because as far as you are concerned, it's about you. If they tell you that it is 2 a.m., that there is a portal, there is a portal in heaven that is open by 2 a.m., you begin to pray 2 a.m. So once you miss 2 a.m., you have missed prayer for that. Yet Jesus said, If ye abide in me, and my word abide in you, you will ask anything in me, and it shall be done. It has nothing to do with time. He said, pray without season. So there people are teaching that you should pray at 2 a.m., at 1 a.m. Why are people doing all of that? Because they think this life, it's about them. The moment you understand that it is not about you, it's about the Father, it's about his own purpose, his own goal. What do you want to achieve in this life? What personal goal do you want to achieve? Of what consequence will it be to God? Did you know that before the foundation of the world, your purpose has been determined? Ephesians chapter 2, uh, I'm not sure if verse 10 get about. He said, for we are created in Christ Jesus unto good works, 
which has been prepared before the foundation of the world. It is not now that you are looking, you have to be looking for what to do. It had been determined before heaven and earth were created. So I'm just going to show us five things that God wants you to do as his ambassador. Very quickly, five things. Number one, he wants you to know him. He wants you to know him. Can we read uh, Philippians? Philippians chapter 3. Verse 10. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. Paul speaking said, That I may know him. That's the first thing. God wants you to know him. In fact, you cannot be his ambassador if you don't know him. And I want you to know this knowing we are talking about is not the knowing of I believe in Jesus. I've received the Holy Spirit. That's, that's not the knowing. Because the person who said that I may know him, this person is somebody who had been to third heaven and has had unspeakable things. This is the person who said God revealed the Lord in him. And he's still saying that I may know him. If Paul is praying to know Jesus, we must do more than that. He was a preacher. His goal was not to win one million souls. His goal was not to win 10 million souls. It is still to know Jesus. In other words, even in ministry, he was still pursuing his own personal relationship with the Lord. His goal was still to know Jesus. As an ambassador, your primary duty is to know him. He said to his disciples, he said, he called unto them that they might be with him and that he might send them. The first thing is to be with him. While he was praying for his disciples in John chapter 17, he said that they may know you and Christ whom you have sent. If all that the Lord will achieve during this anniversary is to create an unending hunger to know Jesus in your heart, it will have been a successful anniversary. A critical sign that you are growing is an unending desire to know Jesus. Such that a man like Paul, now look at what he said, he said, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings and being made conformable unto his death. Those are serious words. If he has simply said that I may know him, is that not sufficient? What else would you know after knowing him? What Paul said, and the power of his resurrection. What did Paul see about his resurrection that he feels I need to know the power that is involved in this? The power that terminated everything that Satan achieved in the garden. It is only people who know Jesus who can pray that they should know the fellowship of his serpents. Have you ever prayed that prayer? I said, Lord, I want to know the fellowship of your suffering. Do you know what that was? 
I want to experience suffering that comes as a result of my fellowship or association with you. Then he said, Be confirmable unto his death. Why would you want to conform? Have you ever seen that? Why do you want to conform to the death of somebody? What is it about the death of Jesus that Paul said he wants to be conformed to his death? Let's quickly look at something about his death. Romans 16. Romans 16 says, For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he lived, he lived unto God. The death of Jesus put an end to sin. He died unto sin once. Jesus does not need to be dying to sin every day. So Paul said, I want to experience this. I want the issue of sin to be past tense in my life. You know, even as believers, we are we are sort of intimidated that if somebody says to you, are you a saint? You say, ah, well, I'm not a saint. You even pride yourself in saying that statement. You say, well, I'm not a saint. But that is exactly what God calls to do. So we feel it is derogating. We feel it is pride for somebody to say, I'm a saint. But that's who you are. And until you believe who you are, you can't be called who you are supposed to be. That's the way God works. Faith must come before works. Without faith, you can never experience whatever God has promised. He says, sin shall not have dominion over you. Look at the way Paul talked about sin. He said, how shall we that are dead to sin? He didn't say, how shall we that are gradually dying to sin? If somebody says that today, he says he's, he's full of himself. But he said, how shall we that are dead to sin live daring any longer? This comes with the knowledge of Jesus. Otherwise, all this will become strange if you don't remain on Jesus. We are to consent to his death. It is not humility to be excusing sin. Did you know that if I ask you, are you a sinner? You should be able to say boldly, you are not. If your answer is that you are still a sinner, what's the difference between you and a sinner? If you acknowledge that you are a sinner, then what's the difference between you and another sinner? It's not pride. That's the way God chose to walk in us. He says, sin shall not have dominion over you. So instead of saying this thing is difficult, what you need to do is to believe what you have said. It is by believing that you will experience victory. As terrible as sin is, the way of victory over sin is probably the most simplistic thing I've ever seen. Romans chapter 6, verse 11. Say, reckon yourself to be dead in deep of the sin. That's how you overcome sin. You don't overcome sin by struggling. You overcome sin by believing that you are dead to sin. And it is that faith that will produce that faith. Because it's already done already by Jesus. So what we do is that we are still trying to overcome sin by the flesh. So you are determined that I'm not going to lie again. Until 72 hours later, you drop another small line. Ah! Then you resolve again that no, 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 it's not going to happen. So you keep resolving, you keep resolving that you are not going to sin, but you keep sin. Because that's not the will of God. So there we we will employ the, the hands of the flesh 
So they tell young girls to make virginity oath, virginity covenant, virginity this. So that when they say, I'm going to remain a virgin until I'm married, so they are not going to defy themselves. That's not the way of God. It looks good. But did you remember Jesus said, don't make any vow? Simply, simply just live for God. You don't, you see, why they do that is once they engage in a vow, they believe that because they have made that vow, they cannot violate it. So that is going to keep them. That's still the flesh. That's not God. But it looks good to the human flesh. Can we read? Because somebody may be asking, so how do we know him? Colossians 3.16. Colossians 3.16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Teaching, admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Which word should dwell in your heart richly? Nigeria issue. Did you know he talked more now about Nigeria issue than Christ? Your mind is more preoccupied than 2023 election than Jesus. <clears throat> Some people are more filled with other people's talk than the words of Jesus. He said, let the words of Jesus, when they hit you, should the Christ throw it out. You can't know him except you know him by his word. So I can easily tell you to the degree to which you know the law by simply looking at your relationship with God's word. So if all you still do is to wake up in the morning and bring out one devotional and read it, I read one verse of the Bible. And do one five minutes prayer and say to your conscience, Conscience, I have done devotion today. Now leave me, let me go and do my own. Yeah, you, are, you have not begun. If that is what you are doing, you have not begun. In fact, my own counsel to believers is that if you are being in the Lord for more than one year, don't use devotion. Just read it at your leisure. That's my counsel. Pick your Bible and read it. Ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Spend time with God's work. There's no magic about it. These days, they are now trivializing the word of God. You will see preachers that even tell you that the word of God is theory. So you hear statements like, now we are done with theory. Let's now do practical. Yeah, yeah. Then you hear one day decline. He's there, he's there, he's there. Is there now that is practical? Please, what has that produced in Nigeria? All those noise, this universe was created by the word of God, and then somebody says it is theory. The Bible says, In the beginning was the word, the word was God, and the word was God. You are calling God theory because you don't understand the word of God. They are trivializing the word of God today. So the average preacher no longer preaches from the scriptures. They tend to say what they want to say and support it here and there with verses. That's why we don't know the Lord. Even Jesus, the Bible said it was his custom eh, to read the Bible. They gave him Isaiah to read. That was not the first day he wanted he would read it. When Satan came, Jesus didn't speak in tongues. He quoted scriptures. In Acts chapter 17, the Bible said Paul reasoned with them from the scriptures. If you read the Bible verse 11 or so, he says, the Berean, they examined the scripture daily, whether what Paul was preaching was true. That was Paul was preaching 
from the scriptures. And what God was preaching was verifiable. In fact, I'm hearing preachers today say that uh, you think that uh, what I said, he said, you know, Paul wrote so many wrong things. They, they've left the Bible. You see, if you don't know your Bible, they will say things you will think is correct. I heard somebody say, all the, all the diseases that Jesus knew are the ones that man could not cure. If you look at it, which day? Eye of the blind, the lame, you know, all of those things, he raised the dead. But Peter's wife wonder had fever. He can heal that which medicine can heal. He can heal that which medicine cannot heal. If you don't read your Bible, you will think it's making sense. Let the word of Christ dwell in your reaching in all wisdom. Pauls. The devil knows this, and that's what he has done to us in the church. He has taken the word away from us. I challenged pastors. I said, you have been pastoring for 20 years. You have never covered with the congregation of one chapter of the Bible. You've never taught them about how to overcome sin. You've never explained to them how to grow in Christ. What have you been pastoring for 25 years? We have now reduced pastoring to doing any ceremony, conducting wedding. Those are the things that occupy a lot of pastors' time now. And then at best, you come and say one motivational talk on Sunday. The people with the wage, the only antidote to lies and deception is strength. These are the things that we shall do anointing service and you shall be free. Then you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. If you want to keep people in bondage, keep the truth away from them. You see, that's why exposing standard in the church does not deliver people from, from bondage. If you bring a past a preacher and I say you caught him in adultery and there's even video, they too will go to his church the following Sunday. There is no standard that has not been revealed. It doesn't take, there is a man in Abuja. He is on record. Consulting wizard to help his church to grow. And they recorded him and it got leaked out. He is still doing full of Bethesda in Akuja. Asking people to pay 50,000. The place is filled up. A man came out of and said, I am divorcing my wife. I am bringing another woman. The congregation is, is increasing. Why? Scandal does not set people free. It is truth. The same people expose them to the teaching of the truth by themselves. They will stop going there. But you think by telling people that this pastor, you caught him on another woman, people will stop going there. Zela. Because it's a spiritual blindness. And scandal is not teach. Scandal is fact. Jesus is the truth. That's the first thing. So the first mission of an ambassador is to know Jesus. Number two. Can we read Romans 8.29? Romans chapter 8, verse 29. We'll find the second mission here. For whom he did for me, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. The second thing, and by consequence of the first one, 
is that you'll be conformed to the image of Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, from the day you were born, the journey that God has set before you is to become like Jesus. He said so much that the only difference between you and Jesus will be that he is the first born. Right from Genesis, he made man in his own image and in his own likeness. But that man, we never met him because he died. For in the day he ate the fruit, he died. And from, the, from that moment, you notice this is what happened. Before Adam, God was the one doing things. And the Lord said, and the Lord said, and the Lord said. Then he created man in his own image. We didn't name all the animals. It was man. Now man can do everything. So it was God who was the calm light day. It was God doing many ceremony before. But when they got there, God stepped aside. Adam could do what God can do. And then he fell. And then God started the day. And the Lord said, and the Lord said. And then one day, a man showed up by River Jordan and he was baptized. He has not done any ministry. And God said, This is my beloved son. It come and well beast. But that domain, God stopped speaking. Did this anyway said anything after what in the Bible? He gave he has found himself. So much that the Bible says in Hebrews chapter one. In verse 2 and 3, that he said he has he, he spake to the fathers in time past in diverse manner, but hath in this last day spoken to us, pastors, by his son Jesus. God has nothing to say again to anybody other than Christ. God's word, God's message, God's mind, God's attention is Jesus. He has nothing more to say to anybody. God does not want you to conform to Elijah. God did not desire you to conform to Moses. Not even the faithful Joseph or the God loving David. He wants you to conform to Jesus. Whatever it is that is in Elijah that does not conform to Christ. You treat it as a trash. The disciples they didn't know. So when Jesus was seeking visa to go to Samaria, transit visa, they denied Jesus. The disciples were furious. Deny Jesus? No, 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 no. These people deserve to die. And then they had to look for scriptural reference. You know that's how people go into error. So they look for scripture. <laughs> the same way the liars caught fire, they caught fire. And Jesus said, You don't know the spirit here. I didn't come to destroy life like they did. He condemned what he did, even though God backed it up with his power. So the problem today is that. Because people don't know this, they still want to conform to Elijah. They want to conform to Elisha. They want to call fire. Even though they have not been seen any fire come down. The only person we are to conform to is Jesus. Anything you can see in Jesus, 20 with. So then people have been copying ministries that have deviated from Christ and it has become the norm. So everybody coming up want to do it like this. Everybody coming up want to do it like this. Something that they can't find in Jesus. They say, oh, Moses. Hey. The person we have to be confirmed to is Jesus. 
And to buttress this, can we read Ephesians chapter 4? You will see that the whole essence of church is still the same matter. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Simple, very clear mission. Now, how would you know that that mission has been fulfilled? Till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Any church, any assembly, that this is not their goal, they are deleted from God. Any ministry that says, no, God has called us to raise millionaires. He has not called us to raise people to become like Jesus. It's a satanic ministry. You can't have any, if somebody says, oh, God spoke to me, thank God. But you can't speak contrary to his own word. If you are an apostle, this is the end point. Prophet is the same thing. Teacher is the same thing. Pastor is the same thing. So you can't have a ministry and the purpose is not to raise people to become like Jesus. You must have a own ministry. You to call people's phone number as if they forgot their phone number. Even through caller, we tell them their phone number. And then you say, but I do rather ministry. So from Sunday to Sunday, it's prophecy, prophecy, error, error, error upon error. People don't know anything. Any ministry whose focus is not to raise people to do this, they are debated. This is the pattern. And tell them it makes them not the five faith ministry. So you can't say, well, as an apostle, you know, people don't know what it is to be an apostle. So every young man today that can buy shoes and hold microphone, the ap 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 apostle. I'm like, you don't even know what is up. It's even insulting. If you knew what an apostle is, you will almost go and bury yourself in a grave and say, God, I don't want to be an apostle. It's because you don't know who an apostle is. And this generation has not seen apostles. I've not seen one single apostle since I became a Christian. I've seen people call themselves apostles. But I've yet to come across an apostle on account of scriptures. Jesus said to the apostle, he said, can you drink of the cup I'm going to drink? You don't know what an apostle goes to. James and John said, yes, we will drink. Said, All right. Who was the first person they beheaded? James. Jesus told Peter, he said, when we are old, this is how you are going to die. How many of you want that kind of revelation? That somebody will tell you that, see, they are going to behead you. That's how you are going to end. And that is Jesus giving him revelation. You don't know who an apostle is. An apostle is not denominational. An apostle is sent to the body of Christ. Oh, an apostle does not preach for money. Paul said, my children of whom I travel, okay, Christ is formed in me. I don't know what he said. That's why they are called bond servant, bond servant. We don't have time to look at all of those things. So each time I see somebody, boom, apostle this, I just lack. Some people think apostle is hard. It's when you have righteous of churches, when you are not an apostle. That's not what the Bible said. And I said, there's something about apostleship that I usually don't share publicly. I said, because one day they will listen to it and then they will be telling people. Because I know that if they are not an apostle, you can never know it. So that one, I always keep it. I don't share it publicly. And it's in the Bible. I know somebody is saying, share it, sir. Share it, sir. 
Galatians 1.16. I want to show you the third thing. The third mission of an ambassador. Galatians 1.16. Let me read from verse 15 to give it a context. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me by his grace, to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, Immediately, I conferred not flesh and blood. The third thing as your mission as an ambassador is to reveal Christ. You can Lord, if you know him, you will become like him. When you become like him, you will reveal him. Let me ask you a very simple question. So when people look at your life, the death in Jesus. Does our life reveal Christ? You know, I'm a civil servant. And one of the things that grieves my heart at work is that you almost can't see a Christian anymore. Everybody is the same. Everybody pursues the same thing. It's very real. How many will you see any Christians still going about with tracks in their pocket? Ready for any opportunity to witness. How many will you hear any testimony that when they wanted to add to this money, this person said, no, I'm not going to be a part of it. It's very real. And why is it real? The first mission has failed. We don't know yet. God wants you. To reveal him to the world. You know, we are put to put the endless manifestation. They wait for the manifestation of the Son of God. The way we read that scripture is that so that we become bankers, we have money, and then we show the world that hey, what the world is waiting to see is Christ. Those animals, what they are waiting for is Christ. The endless creation, what everything you see around is waiting for is Christ. We are disappointment to God because our life is not a main son. If it's in us, they will see it on us. What are they seeing on us? So there are near Christians says, can we do a Christian version of Big Brother? See, the problem is that they love Big Brother because their conscience is troubling them. They now want a Christian version. Number four. First Corinthians 5.15, so that I can round off. Sorry. No, set, it should be Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15. Yes, and you know it is in this chapter that our thing came from. And that he died for all. Please pay attention to this verse. And that he died for all. That they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Did you know that if truly you have believed Jesus, you can no longer live for yourself? This is not a message for preachers. It's a message to the church. Henceforth, from the day you said, I confess Jesus as my Lord. That means he must lord it over you. It's no longer about your will, your desire. It's about him. You are not doing God favor by living for him. He died for you. So that you can live for him. You no longer have a life to live for yourself. It is if you have life, you can live for yourself. Any day, you keep saying, the life that I live, I live by faith in the Son of God. It's no longer high that live it, but Christ that lives in me. But you still want to pursue your own purpose. It has to be the life made for him. Because it is not your life, it is his life. This is not a message for some special people. It's just basic Christian teaching. Just basic. If we understand this, 
the prayer life of the church will change. Because likely, all this prayer meeting that we are doing is for self. It's not for Jesus. That's why we can gather. December is around the corner. We will gather in Shino, in Kao, in Mountain, everywhere. What is the prayer? Favor, Lord, send me favor. That's why somebody can tell you to be waking up CCF to come and join life, to come and pray for victory. It's because you are not living for him. You are living for yourself. If you are a child of God, you don't need to pray for favor. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He will direct your path. You see, when you live for him, you no longer have to worry about many things. All things. Because it's not about it. I don't, I don't bother that somebody can kill me. Because my own life is already dead. If you can kill the life of Jesus, come and kill it. I said something, I said, God forbid that I will ever open this my mouth once to play against witches. Never. It's foolishness. Give me a witch. I will take that witch to chicken report before sit down and give and I said, why will you give your life to Jesus? Because the witch is not a threat. For me that is in me is greater than me that is in the world. He has been crushing and living for ourselves. That's the reason for all of this prayer. I see simple people fasting to be married. Fasting for your husband. I, I mean, never fasted for a soul to be saved. That is not, not sad. When you've been showing seed and fasting for your husband, how many fasting did he fast? He was not looking for love. Adam was not looking for love. They both even don't know they needed marriage. But because they are in the nature and image of God, as their need comes, God addresses it. I said, go and live for God. It was God who took the woman by hand and took him to the man. If you are in the hand of God, he will take you where you should go. Stop fasting. That's not what to fast for. Stop wasting fasting. Let me round up. Let me round up. The last thing I want to say as the mission of an ambassador. We read it earlier in Galatians chapter 1 verse 16 where Paul said to reveal his son in me that I might preach hope. Please, what was Paul preaching? Who was he preaching? Perhaps not thank peace to success. And let me tell you something. No matter what anybody preaches, until you preach Christ, you are wasting your time. He is not going to lead you anywhere. The only message that changes us is Christ. The Bible says, Beholding his glory as in a nail, we are changed into the same likeness. It doesn't matter how high, how high sounding it is. If it is not Jesus, it's a waste of time. Paul said, I preach nothing except Christ and him crucified. That's the message. Today nobody preaches that. Everybody is trying to tell you something about how to get money. They are telling you how to how to move long, how not to die. <laughs> how, how to live long and not die. When you will eventually still die, and you will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. You know what the Bible said? Jesus said, See, if you bear fruit, my father will pour me. So you don't need to waste your time about how to live long. Bear fruit. God will be permitted for you to bear more fruit. It's very simple. You see, when you don't live for yourself and you only live for the Lord, you will see that this life is very simplified. But somebody asked me, what's my, um, where, where will I be in five years' time? I said, I don't even know where I'll be in the next second. They're asking me five years' time. And I'm not joking, and I'm not careless about life. Sincerely, I have no plan other than his plan. All I'm doing every day is to follow his plan. I'm not planning anything. Where I am today, I didn't plan it. He is the one who plans it. And I'm sick. You won't have problem with bandits. Because your life is his life. If they kidnap that life, they have kidnapped his life. If they kill that life, they have killed his life. Moreover, the good news is this. 
Jesus said in Revelation chapter 1, he said, I have the key of hell and death. A Christian should not be afraid of death because the key is in the hand of Jesus. Safety is not in America. It is not in UK. All those that want to Japan. Safety is in God. A Christian does not move unless, unless God moves them. Don't behave like the people of the world. Don't run to each. God told Isaac, stay in the land. I know that is part me in this land. Stay there. I'll bless you there. You step. Just in the Lord. That's all that matters. Whether you're in Syria, among the Nigeria, you're in America. It makes no difference as long as we are in the will of the Lord. God doesn't send people abroad so that they can eat. God can seek anybody, even in a farmer. He fed Elijah three and a half years. He only sends people abroad on purpose. But many people want to go abroad. Just imagine, just to eat. You will go to Saudi first, spend two years there, and then you will now cross to Cyprus, and then you cross to UK. And then you spend eight years to pursue state. Spend another eight years to get passports. How much is life that you have wasted it chasing another country's passport? And you think that is life? That is what God put you here to live for? But did you know that even Jesus came out of Nazareth? The Bible says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Nazareth was worse than Antilia. And yet, God kept Jesus there. Jesus came out of that place. You think that Nigeria is wicked, is corrupt? In the days of Jesus, they had his men who can kill two year old baby and they do. And they, so all Jesus' contemporaries were dead. They killed two years. The mother was the best feeding. And somebody will just come, slaughter that child, dump the dead body, move to the next house. You think that's not worse than our own time? At a point, God said, take my son to Egypt. You will think it's because God is afraid. Later, God said, bring him out of Egypt, that he might be fulfilled, that which was said by prophet Isaiah. Out of Egypt, I call forth my child. Who are those who think of prophecy? God can keep anywhere. The reason you are afraid, see, if you are not living for God, you will be afraid. What is happening? You will truly be afraid. If you are not living for him. If you are living for him, there is nothing to fear. Whether I live or I die, there is no problem. Sincerely. If God said death is ready, he's ready today. I'm ready. And I need it. If he says, oh, let us still be living. Oh, I'm still living. It makes no difference because it is no longer my life. It is his life. If I put my car in your gear and I say, bring my car, I want to remove what the four tire. You say, why do you do that? Is it for that? So those are the five things I think I consider as the missions of a post are uh, of um, an ambassador. Knowing him, becoming like him, revealing him, living for him, and ultimately preaching. There are other things I would have loved to share, uh, but let me respect your time and stop here. Praise the Lord.